All right, come on in, hit the like button, think about subscribing if you're ready. You're new here, welcome to the channel, but most importantly, welcome to the Viking family. So this is a film of, of video slash review slash slots that I really wasn't going to do. Um, I was watching these seasons, uh, episodes per week, but after this last episode, I, I got in the season in general and how I felt with the first one, I felt that I need to do air out some stuff and thoughts on season two of House of the Dragon. Now, there will be spoilers, so I'll let you take a minute to, to decide if you want to spoils or not. So first off, as you know, I didn't care much for season one. So in my opinion, the season, the, this season one was, this season was better, however, I do think this season the writing of and pacing was better to a point. The whole point was to build up to season three, uh, which is fine if there wasn't such a big gap in between each season, challenging the audience and interest and uh, patience. So I was honestly torn in, uh, on how I felt about this season and show as a whole up until after the watching the final episode and honestly uh i went in with low expectations more for fun but then i kind of got really invested so honestly this season and the episode was this well more of the last episode was more underwhelming um the but the season as a whole had me going from oh this is really good to what the fuck really and even in, in Damien's Targaryen story-wise uh, case, it was more of a get on with it already. Uh, I think we can all agree on a couple things here. Two things specifically. One, screw Kristen Cole. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. Second, Damien's time at Har uh, Harn Hall was dragged out way too much. I did like the ending of the conclusion, but they should have done that within two to three episodes. Now, personally, as much as I support Queen Rarina, Rarina, okay, you know, it's Game of Thrones, their names are hard to spell next to it say, so I do apologize. But you know what I'm talking about. I can appreciate her gentle approach to trying peace. First, like her father would have, I felt she was starting to feel weak as a leader, though. Just look at how her counsel, her son, and one of the three new dragon riders would cause, act towards her. And just talk down to her. She did slap that one guy, which I hope he dies in the next season. Um, but she needs to, she needed really to told, show some some muscle some some authority to her she felt weak i mean i get it she's new to this finally she finally gets it but her father did technically as far as far i remember uh teach her the ways compared to being like a and also the fighting on a dragon but not fighting in person um you know type of thing hand of combat which they they talked about and people made a comment about in that one episode but it's it's it, it was just kind of it was very frustrating seeing her be that weak the whole time and people running over her it, it, it just i didn't like it and i really did not like the dragon rider at the last episode how he was been acting like a total douchebag uh, i get it he's he's from the civil uh, non-royal world but you know what it's not that hard to figure out uh, all this on top of the fact that the last episode of the season one and first episode of this season they pretty much made it seem like she was going to cause war crimes to get revenge which we all wanted and we waited for years for a couple years for I don't remember when the first season ended I think 2022 it's 2024 now and now we have to wait to 2026. Instead, we got was an unjustified kid being murdered in the be his bed, which I get son for a son, but that was just a kid that literally had nothing to do with it. 
and not even Rihanna would have, would wanted it. Um, so it's just like you can try to try to justify it, but it's really not because it's the the king and Aegon and the his brother that were uh, the ones the more you should be going after. But whatever, and that kind of whole thing was now I think about it was a little more stupid of trying to go on one one with a rat catcher and and uh, that other guy that guard. Look, well, look. I love good storytelling. I'm not saying I just need violence 100% of the time. But when it's a show like this, we need a little more than what we got. Like an even amount or at least somewhat. And I know people are going after people who, who, who don't like the show because they say it's boring because of that they, they just need action, action, action. I'm not like that. I mean, if I were to watch like something that was specifically made for that, like John Wick, where it's just an entertainment piece of violence, okay, yeah, you got me. There's no story to that, really, and that's fine. But this is Game of Thrones. I want story, strong story writing and character writing, but I also want more stuff thrown in violence-wise, which hopefully we get with Season 2. I mean, Season 3. Again, this was a straight up build up, and in my strong opinion, does not need to be two seasons. So especially when it takes about two years for another season. Now, here's my biggest issue that pisses me off, and why I'm getting really pissed off for that since I lost it last night. Now, I like Ovia Cook, the actress, and she did have a couple fantastic acting scenes. But. Man, she straight is a coward, and her com her coming to Rihanna at the end got to be the most dumb dumbest ending to a season. Hey, Rihanna, Elena, or whatever the hell your name is, you're a dumb coward cunt who needs to. You specifically started this. Yes, your father was the hand behind this, pulling the strings with you. And but you put your sons, specifically Aegon, into that role, defying just something you heard off of, say, a misinterpretation, which obviously it was. You just took it off as I mean, you didn't use any common sense. You're a dumbass, and it, it's just, it's very frustrating that you did all this all that way just. To go start give up, start pouting, start being acting like you're the victim. Oh, whoa, with me. Look, you did this shit, no matter what anyone says, and you need to stick to it, with a, grow some damn balls, and do it. Don't just stare there and rock away and go, oh, I'm, I'm tired of being this type of person that I was raised to be. Oh, no, you did what you did. Your son started the frickin' war officially, where you started it unofficially by being a usurper. And it is what it is. And I I can't anymore with her. Now, here is my rating, and I'll come back with what I have to say as my final thoughts. Honestly, my feelings on this season are mixed. There were good spots, there were bad spots, and there was like, what the hell were they thinking in the writing? Um, but overall, because I am now unfortunately invested into the, in the characters and the story, and they got, again, like they did at the last, uh, last two episodes of the first season, they got me invested once again, aka hooked. So... I will be checking it out, but I won't be doing probably a review of it. But And I wasn't even going to do a review of this once again. But as always, this is my personal opinion, my views on it. Don't get mad at me in the comments because I know how, how people are about this series on both different sides and in the middle and whatnot. But uh, either way, as long as you're being respectful, please leave your uh, comments down below. Remember, I love you all. Please stay safe. Spread the love most importantly. Skull.